Hi, in this video, we're going to talk about the disbursement order in a project finance deal. Okay, so in this video, we're going to talk about the impact of timing of the drawdowns on different facilities on the different metrics like equity IRR and minimum debt service coverage ratios. Okay, so before we go into the topic, for those of you who don't know me, hi, my name is Hedie. I made financial modeling my profession as well as my passion. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, please consider subscribing to my channel. Okay, so the topic, today's topic is kind of in continuation to our previous discussion about term sheet negotiation. So one of the things that lenders and sponsors will be negotiating during the term sheet negotiations is the timing of the equity injection into the SPV. So just to bring you into the context, in a project finance deal, because during the construction phase, there are no revenues, there are no cash inflows. So you need to tap in into the facilities, right? You need to draw down on debts and equity to fund all your CapEx, your EPC payment, your contractor, insurance, SPV budget, whatever you need to pay during construction and fund it, you need to uh, fund it uh, using your loan uh, or either your the equity. OK, so so as we said, one of the things that the lenders and the shareholders will discuss is, first of all, how much will equity contribute in the funding of the total project cost? And second of all, how is this money is going to come throughout the construction phase? Are they going to put everything up front or are they going to put a part of it up front, the rest pro rata with debt? Or from the beginning, from the first construction start date, everything is going to come pro rata from debt and equity. So that's what we're going to look at today. We're going to go into the first, we're going to discuss a little bit about the theory. And then we're going to go into the Excel. And I'm going to show you how you can easily, step by step, model the different drawdown schedules. OK, let's look at three scenarios. Scenario number one, we have a pro rata drawdown. In scenario number two, we have full upfront equity drawdown. And in scenario number three is partial upfront equity drawdown. So in the first scenario, in the uh, pro rata equity drawdown, what is agreed between equity and lender is that in each model period, in each drawdown period, the, all the expenses will be funded pro rata from debt and equity. Meaning that, for example, if you look at this quarter number one, we have around 3.5 million of expenses. OK, out of these 3.5 million of expenses, 1 million will come from equity and 2.4 million will come from lenders. And we continue like that until we finish completion and we basically fund our total project cost of 10 million, 3 million from uh, equity, 7 million from debt. 3 million represent 30% and 7 million represent 70%, which is the maximum gearing. In scenario number two, lenders, they require 100% of the 3 million, which is the equity contribution, to come up front, okay? So for example, in this example, we have 3.5 million of expenses in quarter number one. So the 3 million from the equity, which is around 2.9 million here, is gonna come up front, and the remaining expenses will be all from equity. Uh, sorry, will be all from debt, okay? So that's what we call full upfront equity drawdown. And the uh, scenario number three is kind of a hybrid, is in between these two scenarios. Lenders, they agree that the percentage of uh, equity will have to come up front and the remaining will be pro rata with debts. Let's assume that we have uh, half a million revenues during operation or net cash flow to equity during operation of this plant. OK, and then we want to see basically the impact of these different the three scenarios that we just described on the equity IRR. So we are assuming the same inflows. So the only thing that, as you can see here from the screen, the difference between these three scenarios is just the drawdown schedule. OK, so in pro rata, 
the second one is full upfront and the third one as we discussed is the partial 50% upfront and 50% of equity is drawn pro rata with debt. So before even looking at the equity IRR, you should expect the highest IRR to be for scenario number one, where you're drawing down pro rata with debt and the lowest to be when you're putting all your equity up front, okay? Because of the timing of the injection has an impact on our return calculation on this metric, which is IRR, and it is impacted by the timing of the equity injection. So from the sponsor point of view, they would like to have no upfront equity injection. It's for the benefit of sponsor to have no upfront equity injection. The lenders, on the other hand, they would like to have some skin in the game, some commitment from the equity. So they would require, for their, from their perspective, it's better to have 100% full equity upfront, okay? And the middle ground during the negotiation is to come up with a percentage, the requirement from the lenders, from the equity to be upfront, and the remaining to be pro rata with, uh, with the lenders, okay? So as my mom always tells me, you need to invest something in order to be invested in it. So that's what the lenders require. The lenders require the equity to invest, to have some investment upfront so that they will be invested, so that they have some skill in the game. And that's the main reason behind the requirement of upfront equity injection in the project. Okay, now let's get into Excel and see how we can model different drawdown schedule. And I'm going to show you step by step on how to easily integrate these different alternatives into your financial models. So I'm going to put this template in my Eloquence channel. I'm going to put the link down below so that you can have a look and download it. So it's not a complete model. It's an extraction from a model, but it's just going to show you the drawdown schedule and how to do it and integrate it into your own financial models. So here is an extraction from an input sheet. As you can see, the input sheet is presented in form of scenario analysis as we do in our one model approach. Uh, as you can see here in the financing section, what I need to model this different drawdown schedule is one single parameter, which I call it upfront equity drawdown requirement from the lenders. And I'm going to put different option, 100%, 80%, 50%, 30%, and 0%. So if this parameter is set to 100%, this means that 100% of equity needs to come upfront in the first construction period. If it is set to 0%, this means that there is no upfront equity requirement and all the equity will come pro rata with that. And in between, we can have a percentage upfront equity drawdown and a percentage uh, basically pro rata with that. So what you need to do, step one, is to include this parameter in your input sheet in the financing section as uh, upfront equity requirement from the lenders. And it's just a single parameter. Okay, now we are in step two. We go into the calculation sheet. We have a section, a calculation block for equity. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is to size the upfront equity requirement. So for example, here, my switch in my input is set to 50% upfront. So as you can see here, we have a 50% upfront equity requirement. I know that from the gearing of 30, 70, 30%, total equity requirement is 30% of total project cost, meaning 30% of 10 million. In this case, total equity, I already sized it, it's 3 million. So out of this 3 million, I need to put 1,500,000 upfront and then the remaining pro rata. So step two is to size the upfront equity requirement. And then with the help of a simple minimum function, basically uh, come up with the schedule for the upfront equity requirement. So as you can see here in my first construction, I have 1.6 million of expenses. And I know that I have 500 that I need to put up front. So all that is going to go to fund this 1.6 million and the remaining is going to come for equity. OK, so that's how I'm going to size my upfront equity. So that's step one is to size the upfront equity and then with the help of a minimum function to come up with the drawdown schedule for the upfront equity portion. OK. Okay, the next step is to come up with the pro rata uh, equity drawdown schedule. So for that, we need to 
basically look at some algebra. So we looked at the upfront, the pro rata. Okay, so as you can see here, uh, we know that when we were sizing equity, we said that equity based on the gearing is going to be 30% of the total project cost. That's the maximum equity contribution. Okay, and we know that equity is a percentage uh, upfront and a percentage pro rata. Okay, so we, we have done this, uh, step one, we have already sized our total equity, so that one is known. That one is also known. We know how much equity, upfront equity, we're going to contribute and we know how we're going to contribute it. And so now the what is variable here is this section, which is the pro rata equity. So if you just play with these equations, you know that the equity in periodic equity contribution is going to be 30% in the gearing. In this case, 30% of total project cost, cumulative, minus whatever you have contributed up to now as of equity, upfront or pro rata. Okay, so that's going to be your equation that we need to input in our Excel in order to come up with our pro rata equity contribution. That, and that's what we're going to do here. So here I finished with the upfront in this section. Now I'm going to look at the pro rata. So for the pro rata, we said that we have this uh, equation that we just discussed. So that's the one. So this one is just saying that it's going to be uh, the pro rata schedule is going to be 30% of the cumulative uh, total uses, cumulative total project cost, minus whatever has been contributed as of this period uh, from upfront equity or cumulative uh, pro rata equity. So that's going to give us the uh, pro rata drawdown schedule. And the last step is to sum the upfront and pro rata to come come up with the equity drawdown schedule. As you can see here, that's going to tell you that based on this one, 150% one is going to be upfront. Then there is no need to put any equity until quarter four. In quarter four, we're going to start injecting equity until we exhaust that 3 million. So when you have your equity, then you know that the, the um, debt drawdown is just going to be the whatever is remaining after you paid, you have your total project cost. Uh, these are the equity drawdown, whatever is remaining will come from that. And in this equation, you will perfectly align with the gearing of 30% and 70% debt to equity ratio. And this is very flexible. So for example, if I put this to 100% equity, okay, if I go back to my financing, you will see that now I have the whole one, three million coming up front and the remaining coming from debt and equity. Okay. And if I change the switch and I put it to, for example, zero, zero percent. So it's going to be all pro rata debt and equity, and there's going to be no upfront equity injection. So I really recommend that you do include these mechanics into your model so that when you're doing your negotiation with the lenders, you have the flexibility to basically change if things changes and also to see the impact on your project metrics. So as I said, I'm going to put this template in my Eloquent channel and the link, I'm going to put it down below. You can download it and have a look at it. And if you have any comments or anything that you want to add to this, please let me know in the comment section. And I hope to see you in my next video. Thank you. Bye. If you want to learn how to build better financial models, check out my online course on financial model spreadsheet design at courses.phoenixmode.com.